we're going to look at how you can make a glide translation tessellation on Geometer Sketchpad. To begin with, I have the point tool chosen. I'm going to hold down my shift key and put four points onto the sketch. So I have quadrilateral A, B, C, D. And what's nice about quadrilaterals is I can make it concave, convex, regular, it doesn't matter, and this shape is going to be able to tessellate for us. So here's our original shape. I can pick any one of the sides. I'll choose this one. I'll choose the segment, go to Construct Midpoint. And now what I'm going to do is highlight all four of the original segments. And then lastly, I'm going to highlight that midpoint, transform, mark center. And you saw how the point blew up, so the center is marked. So go back to transform, rotate. And I'm going to rotate it by 180 degrees. So you can see this is the same shape, but it has been rotated by 180 degrees. I can grab a point, move it around, and you can see how the two shapes are staying congruent to each other no matter how I move it, giving us some interesting combinations. But I want to get more out of this, so I'm going to highlight this segment, construct midpoint again. Now I'm going to choose all of these sides of the quadrilateral, make sure I have my point selected, transform, mark center, transform. We're going to rotate this one by 180 degrees also, and I've got the same shape again. And I can keep doing this over and over again to get the same shape over and over again. Um, but we can fill in a lot of blanks here. Also, one thing we can do to make our shape stand out a little bit more is choose the four vertices of the quadrilateral. I'll go to Construct Quadrilateral Interior, and then it fills it in for me. I can do that for the other ones as long as I have points at the endpoints of the segments, and I can click on those points to make them show up. I'll go back over to this one highlight the four points that I want, go to construct quadrilateral interior again, and again this is making it stand out kind of nice. For this one I'll construct the quadrilateral interior one more time. Once I do that it doesn't stick out quite as well unless I click on it again and go to display color. I can choose any other color that I want. I'll go with a nice black one in there and so you can see I have the black and yellow that are coordinating with each other. All right, so let's get a few more of the tessellations going off in this direction. So once again, I'll construct midpoint. And then I want to choose all these sides. Transform, mark the center. Transform, let's rotate by 180. I'm going to do this a few more times to fill up more of the screen. So I'll go ahead and pause it and uh, do a few more of these going across. Make the color from black to light gray because it's easier to see but I've got three of the yellow quadrilaterals, three of the gray quadrilaterals, and they're all lining up pretty nicely. One thing I can do is clean it up by a little bit, getting rid of some of these midpoints. I'll go to display, hide midpoints, and that does make it look a little bit better. Um, another thing I can do is click on all of these points, and I don't necessarily want to get rid of all these points yet, but to clean it up, one thing I can do then is code to display, hide labels, so all those letters are gone, which makes it, again, look a little bit cleaner. But I need to get some more of these shapes in here, so I'm going to choose on, click on this segment this time, construct midpoint, and I'm going to choose all the sides of this yellow quadrilateral. Lastly, that point, I have to make sure I mark the center again, and then we're going to rotate by 180 degrees again, and now we have this quadrilateral, which is congruent to the other ones, if you see how it's the same gray one, in other words, pointing in this direction. And um, I can keep doing that over and over again. So I'll come over here, construct another midpoint, choose all the sides of this yellow quadrilateral again, transform, mark the center. If you don't mark the center, it's going to use the previous center, and I don't want that. And I'll do another rotation of 180 degrees. I get another one of those gray ones. So I'll go ahead and pause it do a few more of these to get the next row going. So I've got three of those in there. Now I'm going to start working on another row of the yellows going from side to side. Pick whichever side I want. I'll choose this side again. Construct midpoint. And then I want to rotate this gray one by 180 degrees. So I'm going to select all four of those sides and do another rotation of 180 degrees. And for these, I'm going to have their shapes be yellow again. So I'll choose all the coordinates for the vertices. 
Let me color, make it yellow. And so now I'm going to get another row of those. That row of yellows, now I'll continue on with another row of grays. I'll choose this segment. Once again, construct midpoint. And then I'm going to take all of these sides. And I can also take all these points. I just want to make sure the last one that I choose is that midpoint because that's what I want the center to be. So there's our selecting the center. We'll rotate by 180 degrees. And there we go. And I'll go ahead and pause it and get another row of the grays. At this point, I've added a few more rows and it's starting to take shape a little bit more. To clean this up quite a bit, I'll highlight everything, go to display, show labels, and that makes it look horrible. It shows up everything. But then if I go right back and go to display, display hide labels, now everything is gone. Those points are in there. I can click on a lot of these individually. I don't care about a lot of these points. So as I start highlighting them, I can go to display, hide points, which also cleans it up by quite a bit. And the shape itself starts to look a lot cleaner and a lot nicer and neater. I'll just clean up a few more. I don't want to get rid of too many because if I get rid of one of the original ones and I can't move it around, but you notice how these shapes move and flex. I can get different shapes as we're moving these things around. Some of the shapes look kind of interesting. Some of them look kind of plain. But I've got all these different tessellations trying to figure out do I see any kind of cool patterns in there that might be useful for something. And these are all just linear, so maybe there's not a whole lot to do with them. But I've got a nice tessellation here.